Welcome back once again to Jack's Tech Corner. I'm your host, Jack, and today we're going to be doing another Photoshop Elements 12 video tutorial. Now, this uh, tutorial here that we're working with today, creating Polaroids, will work basically with any version of Elements that you have. You don't have to have version uh, 12, but staying in the, in, in the limelight and in the realm of uh, keeping the version straight, we are going to go with version 12. As you see on your screen right now, you are already looking at the final product. Now, how did we get here? The steps are so simple and so easy that you're going to say, wow, I wish I would have did that a long time ago. The picture that we'll be using today is a shot of the trees going up through the center of the trees. This is actually a picture that I took, and this was actually our Facebook challenge of the week. Each week, I'm trying to come up with a Facebook challenge for our Facebook group. So if you've seen the slides in the beginning, please join our Facebook group. And that is at Jack's Tech Corner. That is the Facebook group where I will be throwing out a photo challenge of the week. And we'll be uh, talking about those later on. So how do we get here and how do we set this picture up? Well, it's very simple. Let's go back up to, we are going to go to edit and revert. Now, this is very simply the picture that I started with. The first thing we're going to do, as always, whenever you go to start doing a Photoshop Elements video, or <laughs> whenever you start doing a Photoshop Elements uh, edit, or even Photoshop edit, you should always duplicate the background layer. The reason we do that is we want to create a new layer so we don't destroy the original picture. Do that by either holding down your Command or your Control key and hitting the J key. You can see here now we have a layer one. That's the layer we'll be working on. We don't have to worry about that background layer until later. And I'll tell you about that here in a second. But right now we're just going to work with layer one. And what we're going to do now is simply go up to image, the pull down menu image at the top of your screen, go to resize and go to canvas size, not image size, but canvas size. And we're going to look at the canvas size that we have here. Right now, the width you see is 25 inches, and the height is 16 inches. What we're going to do is add two to each of these. Now, not an exact number two. We're just going to add two. So 25, if we add two, will be 27. So let's try that, 27. 16, if we add two, will give us 18. The anchor point you can see is right in the middle. So we're anchored perfectly around the center and in the middle. The canvas extension color. Now here's something you gotta be careful about. I want the canvas extension color to be white. If you click the little, there's a little color uh, emblem right here at the corner. If you click on that, you'll see here where it is white, but you can make it any color you want. But what we did, we chose background color. If we look at our color swatches over on our toolbar, you'll see that the white is on the background. If your white is on the foreground, then just choose foreground color. Very simplistic. What we're going to do now is all we have to do is click the OK button. You can already see now that we have the Polaroid effect. Now, if you're not old enough to remember Polaroids, that was when we took them out of the Polaroid camera. We waited a couple seconds for that film or that uh, picture to develop and we tore the piece of paper off the top of it. And what we had was this Polaroid shot. This is what this gives you in just a few easy clicks. What we're gonna do next though is we're gonna add a little bit of, um, to make this more interesting, we're gonna add a little bevel to it and we're gonna add a little drop shadow. To do that, it's very, very simplistic. Go down to the bottom to the effects panel. If you're using an earlier version of Elements, it may in fact not be at the bottom. It may be actually at the top. Either way, click on Effects. And in the pull down menu, just look in here for Bevels. Once you find Bevels, it's very easy to do this. All you got to do is pick the bevel you want. And we'll grab this one to make it uh, pull up off the paper a little bit higher. And we're just simply going to double click that. If you noticed on top of our picture and on the sides, we now have a bevel. Let's go back down and click on layers to go back to our layers panel. And in layer one, now you can see a little FX. This is telling us that we have an effect on that layer. Double click the effect. 
you now have a layer or a style setting for that actual effect. And if you go to bevel and move the size, watch the picture itself. You can see now where that bevel is coming up even higher. It almost looks like it's framed there. So pull it back down. We just want the bevel to be just a little bit there so we can just see it, but we don't want it to be too overbearing. The next thing I want you to do is we're going to add a drop shadow. Click the little pull down menu, which is the little triangle here in front of drop shadow and check the drop shadow box. And now you have a few different settings that you can use. The first one is size. If we do this, you can actually make this uh, drop set the drop shadow. You can see where it's getting black behind it. A shadow is very subtle. If you have a very, very uh, heavy shadow, what you're going to find out, it's not going to really look realistic. The next is the distance away from the actual picture itself. You can see here where we're pulling the distance away. And if you can't see, look at the picture on the left hand side and you can see where the distance is pulling away from itself. We can change that distance just by simply changing our lighting angle. Right now it's showing you the lighting is coming in from the top right and it's coming into the center. So the light would be coming across your picture and that's how that shadow is getting there. If you in fact want the shadow to come on the other side, just grab this pointer and turn it the other way. And now we can see where the shadow is coming across the right side. I generally like my pictures to look more this way than the other way. It always seems to me that I always bring my light in from the left. The next is the opacity. How dark do we want that shadow? You can see here it's more pronounced, but shadows are generally lighter. So you want, might want the opacity just to be about, uh, about 70. When you have all that done, all you have to do is simply click OK. Now we have our bevel, we have our drop shadow, and everything is looking pretty good. If you want to take one last step on your picture and give it that little wow factor, you can play around with a little bit of background color changing. So now if we click on that background layer and click on our gradient tool under the draw menu. So if you move your mouse on there, you'll see where it says gradient tool, or you can hit your letter G. This will bring up the gradient panel in the bottom. What we'll want to do now is pick out a gradient. Most of the time, it's usually defaulted to foreground uh, to transparent. Pick out one of the colors. Let's grab this color here. And what we're going to do now is we'll click on the top or the bottom or the center, wherever you want to start your gradient. And, you know, you can play around with that. You can create a bunch of different shapes. We're gonna, I like to go from the top left corner to the bottom right corner and then just leave the mouse go. At that point now, you can see we have the gradient coming behind the picture. And now we actually created that conversation piece that I always try to help you help you uh, achieve in the end. Because then when you get this developed and framed, uh, you might even want to put this in a, in, you know, in a matted frame uh, that would look really, really nice. And then it creates a great conversation piece. Folks, I hope you've enjoyed this short Photoshop Elements 12 video tutorial. And I hope you stop back. If you're not subscribed to the channel, please do so and click the subscribe button. Also, don't forget the Facebook group, Jack's Tech Corner, where I will be working uh, each week to try to come up with a new uh, photo assignment for you to get those cameras out there and get those shutters clicking. So until next time, folks, keep your shutters clicking, keep your editors editing, and I'll see you back here very soon again on Jack's Tech Corner. Thank you and bye for now.